Well, hello again, Compass Bible Church. Welcome back to another day of revival from the Bible. And I don't know about you, but I need it every single day. God uses his word to revive my heart, to encourage me, to build me up. And I hope it does the same for you. And I hope these videos are helpful uh, in helping you get some things out of God's word together. Now, I have shared before in sermons uh, that... I can be a pretty forgetful person. Uh, you know, I'm the kind of person that, you know, I'll go downstairs to get something, get downstairs and forget what I came for and come back upstairs with some something totally different, right? Um, I, I need to focus. I need to remember in those situations. My daughter, one of her nicknames for me is Dory, as in the fish from Finding Nemo that has short-term memory loss, right? They can't remember right? Sometimes she's like, Daddy, are you being a Dory right now? And sometimes I'm like, yeah, Hannah, I, I am. Um, but that's something we can all re relate to. We, we forget things. And it might be, look different for uh, different ones of us, but it's not just something that we laugh about. It's a serious concern that God has about people. He, he is concerned that we are forgetful people. And that's why in the Old Testament, we see that again and again. We've already seen that in Deuteronomy. He's saying, hey, don't forget. Don't forget what I have done for you. And so today we read Deuteronomy 15 through 17. And there's a cool connection between passages today that I love when we are reading from the Old and the New Testaments at the same time. We see this from time to time. Uh, but I loved seeing we read about the Passover in Deuteronomy 16. And we read about the Passover in Matthew chapter 26 as Jesus celebrates with his disciples. And lots of times when we start talking about the feasts in the Old Testament, people's eyes start to glaze over and they start to, you know, just think, oh yeah, I'm, uh, we don't do this stuff in the New Testament anymore. And I want you to stop and think, why were these there? And I think a lot of Christians actually think that these were there because somehow the Jews earned their righteousness by keeping these feasts. <clears throat> and the answer is, no, that's not how it worked. Read the Bible. Read the book of Romans like we are right now. No, Abraham was saved by faith, not by his works. The point of these feasts was to help the people remember that they would remember all that God has done for them. Because God was concerned, you're, you're a bunch of dories. You are going to forget what I have done. So I'm going to give you this feast that you're going to do every year to remind you. And I'm going to give you multiple feasts to remind you of the things that I have done. So that's what you need to think when you think through these things. And that's why we get to the Old, the New Testament in Matthew 26. We see Jesus instituting the Lord's Supper, right? Where we take the bread, where we take the cup. We remember the body of Christ. We remember the blood of Christ. That is to help us remember. And again, there's, there's, there's nothing magical that happens when you consume that just like there was nothing magical when they would take the, the Passover, but that doesn't mean that it's not important. That doesn't mean that it's not powerful. When we take the Lord's Supper, it's a serious thing. And it, it saddens me right now that, I mean, this Sunday we would be celebrating the Lord's Supper, but that's something we do together as a church family. And so the first time we get together as a church family again, we will celebrate the Lord's Supper together to remember what he has done for us. But here's what I want to encourage you with. Understand the importance of these signs. And they are important. The Bible makes it very serious. The Lord's Supper is something that we should take seriously. Something that we should not take lightly. Uh, that some, Just because something is symbolic or a memorial does not mean that it is not important. But here's what I want you today as you're not going to celebrate a Passover feast tonight. We, we, we can't gather together this weekend and celebrate the Lord's Supper together. But I want you today to remember, to stop, and 
to think about what Jesus did for you. He is our Passover lamb. How often do you think about that? How often do you remember that his body was broken for you? His blood was spilled for you. What a difference that will make in your life when you remember that. You'll have more peace as you know your sins are forgiven. You'll have more seriousness as you fight against sin. You'll have more hope because you know what God has already given you. I'd encourage you to remember today. That's the main thing I want you to get out of our Revival from the Bible reading today is take time to remember what Jesus has done for you. That his body was broken, that his blood was shed for you. That's an important thing for us to remember. Now, briefly, before we uh, wrap up and pray, even on that subject, we're going through the book of Romans. And if you remember yesterday, I pointed out how Romans 2 starts to kind of point the, put the scope on the people that are religious, that are like, oh, I'm not like those pagan people in chapter 1. I'm a religious person. I know the law. I've been circumcised. And what you're going to see today in Romans chapter 2 is he makes clear, hey guys, what you know doesn't score you any spiritual points. And the external things that you do, like getting circumcised in that, in the Jewish culture, right? That doesn't score you any spiritual points, especially when you do those things, but you actually do still do the things that the pagans do. And that's something that we need to understand today. Being familiar with the Bible doesn't mean that you're okay with God. Going to church, taking communion, right? You can do those things, and that doesn't necessarily mean anything in your relationship with God. So those are things to remember. And remember, he's building his case, and we'll see it in these next couple days in uh, Romans chapter 3. No one is righteous. Not even one. And that's a good thing for us to remember that, hey, it's not because, well, I know the Bible, so I'm a Christian. Oh, I go to church, so I'm a Christian. Oh, I've been baptized, so I'm a Christian. No, none of those things mean anything without faith, which we'll get to in the coming chapters. And last, our psalm for today, we got into Psalm 41. And I think a good thing for us to remember here in these first few verses, blessed is the one who considers the poor. In the day of trouble, the Lord delivers him. The Lord protects him and keeps him alive. He is called blessed in the land. You do not give him up to the will of his enemies. The Lord sustains him on his sickbed. In his illness, you restore him to full health. And so here we see blessed is the one who considers the poor. God takes care of the generous person. And even as we're going through this really uncertain time, I mean, one of the biggest ways it's going to impact people is economically. That's one of the biggest fears right now. I mean, the stock market doesn't know what it's doing. A lot of businesses are trying to figure out, whoa, what do we do in the face of a pandemic? And I think it's going to call some of us to a place of, of generosity, where there's going to be needs that haven't been around before that we need to step up and and meet. And so I want you to just be praying uh, that, hey, if, if, if you're going through this coronavirus thing and everything is just copacetic for you with your job and finances, that God would put on your heart and that you would just keep an open eye for the ways that you could step up to meet needs, right? We've got our help center on our website where practical needs that come up. Uh, we want to help people reach those. If you haven't signed up to volunteer to be available to serve when those needs come up, you can. But also, and if this is unknown, this is uncharted territory for all of us, as financial needs uh, come up, and that's a definite possibility for families or people in our church that may lose jobs in this time and, and come across difficulty, remember this psalm, that blessed is the person who is who is generous. Or And if you're on the flip side of that and you are uh, on the on the struggling side, my encouragement to you is don't hesitate to talk to somebody, right? Don't withhold the opportunity from someone else to be generous. And even start talking to somebody, you know, before things get to that breaking point for you. Talk to someone in your life group or your leader or something and let them know about some of the trials you're facing so they can start praying for you. You can get counsel and it, it, possibly if the point comes up, you, know, you can be directed to how, how you can get help. So good, a timely word for us from Psalms. But the, remember, the main point from, I, from our uh, revival from the Bible reading today, remember. And specifically, right, we don't uh, keep all these 
feasts in the Old Testament that the nation of Israel did, but God has given us a, a feast to remember, and that is the Lord's Supper. And while we can't do that like we normally would this weekend, still, I want you to take time even right now and remember what Jesus has done for you. Why don't you pray with me uh, right now? God, we do want to remember, Lord. We, we want to remember what Jesus has done. We want to remember his, his body. We want to remember his blood, which says here in Matthew 26, was poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. God, how sweet is forgiveness. How precious is your love. How precious is the blood of Jesus Christ. God, help us to remember that. Help us to look to you, to trust in you, Lord. Uh, to remember, God, that if you've already given us your own son, how will you not also with him freely give us all things? God, so we want to take time and we want to remember today. We want to remember what Jesus has done for us. We want to thank you for what Jesus has done for us. For us, God, and even as we think about worshiping you in spirit and truth and letting the throne set the tone, may we remember that the one who is on the throne gave his life for us. Lord, fill us with confidence, fill us with peace, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.